Enter the cat. Oh, this is cool. <laughs> Check this out. Just before we get into this video, I want to say that this is going to be a big travel part first. I did a day trip to Cologne yesterday, which was awesome. After that will be the weekly review. If you want to jump straight to the weekly review, which I would understand, but not really. <laughs> Here's the timestamp. I'm going to go right away. And uh, if not, let's go back to Cologne. Good morning, traders. Welcome back to Frankfurt in Germany. Today I'm doing a day trip to Cologne, a couple of hours from here. First, I gotta meet someone at the stock market. After four days of taking a subway and having countless instructions by different people, I still don't know how to use a subway and I still always pay the highest price possible not to get caught with the wrong ticket, but yeah. out of the subway and I have to find the stock exchange that's where having data on your cell phone is really useful it goes much faster all right and I think I made it I stopped just next door for some coffee but the food looks so good amazing This is guys the proof that we made it to the right stock market with the bulls. Now en route for Cologne. And I'm with uh, this guy who's going to bring me to Cologne. It's going to be pretty interesting. And just like this, we made it to Cologne. And first thing I was driving, and it what I took three times, four times the time it took. But uh, yeah, first look at the city, it looks really nice. I'm really, really impressed. It's kind of a different vibe than Frankfurt, but similar at the same time, because it's still Germany. But we'll head out of this parking, because there's nothing much interesting to do here. And we'll go explore. And we made it to this restaurant. I was pretty hungry. Looks like the menu is going to be good, traditional, Cologne classics. Wonderful. That was just an awesome lunch. And now we're heading to the cathedral, which is probably the number one most mentioned, most written about place to visit in Cologne. If you're going to have advisor, that's what they're going to tell you. You always have to do some of the touristic stuff, of course. So let's head there.
and we made it out of the cathedral. This is a pretty big place, pretty big building, and outside it's like a pack of people. The probably most touristic place of Cologne, I guess. But it's a good, a good vibe. And now the dome. Stairs, right? I guess we made it to the top and as you can see I'm sweating because number one it's really hot when you climb the stairs number two there's a lot of stairs but we made it at the top so it's pretty cool worth it and uh, let's have a look at this As you guys know, I love the places with really nice views. So we went down the cathedral, which is kind of a breeze, really fast. But we're gonna help ourselves to come to this other place on the other side of the river. It's just amazing. Take a look at that. So I had to work on saving the battery of the camera for the whole day, but we made it out now back to Frankfurt, and that was a pretty good workout. Pretty, uh, pretty amazing. Stairs, bridges, walking through the beer stands in front of the water, pretty cool. Trying to make the most out of this traffic jam here at the front with uh, some cars and an accident apparently. So without the roof, this feels a little bit like being on the beach, except that it's on a highway, but it's not pretty much the same. And with that being said, awesome day. Now we are the next day, and we'll do the weekly review as always. Now, I'll be honest, I didn't take a single trade last week. I was kind of busy exploring and doing interviews and talking to people and stuff. So I did look at the chart. I'm not sure we had any opportunity anyway, which is kind of uh, weird. But we'll go back on the chart, see what that looks like, and kind of what I want to trade for the next week. Today, I'll use the three chart kind of layout on this chart, because I think it's easier to look at the setup and what happened on the chart. By the way, if you guys are wondering, this is available on trading view i think if you get the pro version i'll put the link below in here for trading view if you want to encourage me doing more videos like this the links will be below it's an affiliate link i might get a small commission on your purchase if you decide to purchase the pro version at no additional cost to you of course so first thing first aud can this pair is on a nice range between two levels at this moment so not really interesting to trade for me but i want to wait for price to get to the one very good round number level okay 1.0 perfect but if we go on the multiple time frame layout, the price is still moving up here and kind of up and down, up and down. And here's also between two levels, something really interesting to trade on this pair. So I'll wait for this one and uh, it's, it won't be flagged for the week because it's not at the major level. LDGPY, if we go on the weekly chart, this is really, really between two levels. But if we go on a daily chart, you'll see it's approaching the 82 level pretty well, pretty fast. Okay, so I'm looking for buying opportunities on this pair as it reached the level here to the downside. And if we go on multiple time frames, the 4 hour chart and the 1 hour chart, they're going down. So there's no setup yet. But we would have to see what happens with this in the coming week. I'll keep it flag as close to the level and I want to see what happens. But that's it for now. It is the D. It's kind of at a nice level. We talked about this earlier, but now it went down the past week. I want to see how this happened on the lower time frame. We had a pretty cool setup here, which I definitely missed. That setup was at five. And this is a little bit late here in uh, Europe. So if you're in Canada, trade this, perfect. That's a great setup. But for me, that was impossible to trade. It's like, I think midnight or 1 a.m. or something. 
But uh, as you can see, like it worked. So if you trade this, perfect. I didn't take it, and I accept that fact. But let's see if we have another setup. This is close, but no. So good pair that went down. Now we could wait for retracement back to the upper band of the Bunchu band, either on the far chart or the one hour chart. And that's what I'll be trading for this pair. So I'll keep it flat it's at the zone, and I'll keep looking at this pair. LUSD is at this major level, which we talked about a few times earlier, so 0.75. It pushed back up, but went down pretty fast this week, probably because of the news or something similar. And if we go in the lower time frame, you'll see there's no setup yet, but we are back at the zone, which means we could look for bullish setup on the pair. And that's what I'll be looking for the whole week, so I'll keep it flat. Very interesting. Cat CHF went away from the zone, so now it's really between two zones. And it's been going sideways, so nothing really interesting to trade for this pair because there's no nice zone. Except if we go, sometimes I like to see on a lower time frame, like a daily chart, if we have any intermediate zone between those two. But here it seems like it's kind of messy a little bit, okay, so I won't really trade that. And I'll wait for price to get back to the lower zone, 0 0.71, before I get to trade the pair. So unflagged. Euro AOD. It's doing something interesting. So we talk about the fact that we didn't like how this pair was moving earlier. See when, when it reached this level here, it went back and forth for a couple of weeks. And now it went back down, pushed back up as a retracement, back to near where the zone is, 1.57. So good place to look for setting up with these again. And uh, yeah, see how this is like really clear when pushed back here, kind of a small resistance on this wick. And I'm gonna try to see on the lower time frame what that had what had happened to do. We had this big bearish rejection on the forward chart, which is a good sign that there's something happening here. But no setup for me because this is way too big to enter a trade. So we would have to wait. This is close to the higher band of the Bungie band on the one hour chart. So I'm gonna be trading that and looking to see what happens on this pair. But interesting, I'll keep it flat. And we'll go on your cap. Which is between two zones, nothing very interesting. I think the past week we talked about the fact that it reached this support area on the weekly chart, exactly. But we didn't have any setup, if I'm not mistaken. So let's see what happens. No, no setup there. So nothing very interesting to trade because we look for buying setup on this pair at this point. And it's near the higher band of the bunch band for both lower time frame. So we would have to see price to go all the way down to the lower band for us to have a nice setup, which might take time. So I wouldn't flag this pair, because I don't think I'll trade it next week. And because it's between two zones, the likelihoods are much, much smaller. But as always, I have to do these reviews every morning, go back on the chart, watch what happens in the past days. And if you need to flag something more, flag it, so you can watch it more during the day. And that's how we do things. All right, we have to stay top notch on that, for sure, all the time. Hero GVP. It is really messy. Like, see how I really hate that type of stuff where it's like push back up, back then. This is like weeks going sideways, so nothing very interesting. And this is the kind of pair that you might want to trade if you really tra trade over time frame. But on the higher time frame, see what you buy here. There's not much room for price to move for you to get a profit. That's kind of hard. And here we had no setup on, the, on any time frame pretty much. And that's the thing I don't want to trade because it's really too tight, doing nothing, and that's going to be safe to these type of setup I trade with the monster bands. So forget this one; it's not going to be very interesting. Usually, why it will be interesting at this major level, 128, and it didn't do much for now. We'll see what happened on the lower time frame. No setup on any time frame, but this is closer to the lower bands. We could easily push back down, have a setup on the lower monster band and push back up as a nice reversal trade from this level. So I really want to watch this one for the next week. That's very interesting. And uh, I'll give it flag for sure. Now, Euro USD, we're getting to something really interesting. A guy asked me already this week if I was shorting the pair, but I said no, because this is a perfect zone of support, right? We talked about this a few times also, how this was reaching the 1.17 level, and the area we could look to buy on or that we that we would be bullish on is all the way from 1.17 to 1.14 that's kind of a big range okay but it pushed back up 
in the past week had this big move because of the news on Friday and that is pretty much what happens so we are not looking we didn't have any setup to buy or I think we had a setup earlier a long time ago I bought in this pair but price didn't move enough been swept out I think at break even or something similar and now we can look for more setup because it's back down to this area so close to the lower band of the long-term band again on both time frames the lower time frames and I'm gonna be going to buy on this for sure I'll keep it flat but I want to see what happens of course on the lower time frame and just a heads up that it's at a major level because this has been a nice support or area in the past okay so resistance here turning to support over there and coming back to the same zone that's pretty interesting now JP CAD is that a support area? This is kind of between two zones. We would call this an intermediary support area because it's not major. Major would be something like this at 1.60. But now we are between the two at 1.78. But good to look for setup. And we see what the lower time frame did on this pair. So we had no setup. So we went a little bit below the level. Push back up. We had no setup on the far chart. And no setup on the one hour chart either okay this is too big to enter a trade it's a big counseling it's still at the zone so we can look for more setup we'll have to wait for price to pull back from the highest band here to the lower band to look for buying opportunities and that's going to be it for the pair but we keep it flat it's at a level now GBCHF is close to this level here let me see a little bit bigger yeah kind of close we look for buying opportunities at 1.30, a really good round number, so that's awesome. But we want to wait for price to push back down to this level, because it's a little bit far for now. But that's where we would look on the lower time frame to play straights. So nothing so far, except this was pretty good, but a little bit too high. This is 1.315, out of 50 pip before the zone. You could trade this. I'm not a big fan of trading that. When it's too far from the zone but we are close to the zone so we have to keep watching and look for setup on the pair that's really interesting this is a very good round number jvp gpy is doing something random we talked about it a few times that's i don't like how it's looking so i'm just gonna skip straight to the pair go to the next one jvp is a d is also kind of doing something a little bit random not respecting the zones too much because it's been back up and then touching this, going sideways, going back down, and that's between two zones. So nothing interesting to trade here, except we thought, I've seen this here going close to the lower band. I thought I would flag it, but now it's really not looking good. So we're gonna flag it. Not trade a pair probably for the next week or so, until it gets back to normal. Now GPUSD is between two zones. I wanna see this on a higher scale a little bit. So it went up, down, and out between like these two zones, 1.31 and 1.36. I would like price to go back lower to 1.31. That's why we put a rectangle on the chart. And I'm gonna wait for this one because it's not really interesting. So I will unflag it for now, since it's not flagged. But I will keep looking every day to look at the chart and see what happened on the pair. And to the cat. Oh, this is cool. <laughs> Check this out. We have been going back and forth for a few weeks on this pair. I've said a few times, I think the past four reviews, I said, this is between two zones, don't trade it. And now it's coming back to the zone, 0.92. Goes on to look for selling opportunities, like this was a support area, turning into a potential resistance area. Might not be happening, we'll see, but it's at the zone right now. And if I go on a, actually I don't need to do this, <laughs> multiple time frame charts. Uh, if we go on the lower time frame, it went to the zone, now big, res big resistance candle here, but no setup for me. And we'll have to look more closely. But this is really at the zone now, so I kind of like it. Now use the can, it looks like I've been swept out on this one. Let me have a look. There we go, exactly. So I don't know why it's making this way more higher, but yeah, I've been swept out on this one. I had to trade a short trade at the zone. I wasn't sure if I was stepped out earlier in the week, but now it's happening, yeah. So. Let me just take a screenshot of this and I'll remove the thing after. Because the reason I took a screenshot is to put it in my trading journal as soon as the trade is exited and stopped out or getting to take profit. 
But now I like to have my, my charts clean when I look back at it to look for opportunities to trade. It looks like we've broken outside the zone we want to trade. That's going to be less interesting a little bit. But price been up. Let's see what we have other than that. Uh, this is, yeah, we'll have to wait quite a long time. If we're broken out of this, then it's going to be all the way to this other level here, 1.35, where we really reversed strongly in the past. So not really going to just trade the pair for now, I'll unflag it, but wait for price to come closer to this area here, 1.35, to look for selling opportunities. But this was not what I expected on the pair, for sure. I put back this GPY on my chart last week just to have a look, and I didn't trade this for a very long time, but I saw we reached a major level, 111, and I'm going to look for selling opportunities there. Looks like price reach, went back down, reached again. And now we look for trades on this. Let's see on the lower time frame what that looks like. And that was not a good setup here on the 4 hour chart, but the 1 hour chart didn't do anything. So we could wait for this and I will look for setups. The reason why I didn't trade this pair mostly is because I didn't really like how things look. And usually it was too tight or too consolidating and then breaking out on lower time frame. And I couldn't really trade that, but now it looks different. So I'll keep it bringing back. And I'll try to see if I can find some setup on this pair. But we have something interesting happening right now. So I'll flag this one. UCSGD is at this level. Looks like as we can also break above. So if it's going to break above the 1.34 level, then we have to wait for price to get to. Do want a weekly chart to make it easier? Price to get to around this area here. Okay, so 1.39, which is a 500 pip difference. But we could look for a point D, of course, somewhere along the way. So this is kind of a big zone. I would put some rectangle. But I'll unflag it for now. And uh, yeah, we'll look for that. That's about it for the review, guys. I hope you liked it. Comment below with your thoughts as always. And I hope you like the travel part first. If you watched it, of course, you watched it, as always. And I'll catch you guys here tomorrow. Actually, I'm going to Porto today. That's going to be for tomorrow's video. And I'll catch you guys there tomorrow. Ciao.